What are we talking about? What are we talking about? I was double ending. What are we talking about? Danny, can be honest with me? I wasn't. It's just, let's have a word in private, okay? Because okay. I went, you're in my house, but I want to have a word in private with you. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, no worries. So, Dan, are you feeling okay at the moment? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, yeah, thanks. You're not recording this, right? No, no, it's just between you and me and no one else. It's a totally private. Totally private conversation. Right? Okay. Welcome to Myths. I'm Matt Huss. And I'm Dan Rhodes. Whether you know about Theseus or you're revising your syllabus. If you want tales with a bit of jest or you just want to hear about incest. What? What? It's really interesting. Welcome to Myths. Welcome to Myths. Hello and welcome back to Myths, your favourite podcast. Probably. <laughs> I, 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 what happened there? Went in for a hot, hot, large confidence, but then real, reality check halfway through. Um, how are you, Dan? I'm not too bad, Matt. How are you? Thank you for having me once again on a podcast that we both do together. <laughs> <laughs> again, a high delusions and then reality check. That's how, well, we've got a pattern going on. After 97 episodes, there's a pattern going on. But, uh, yeah, what's new with you, Dan? It was good. I slept over your house last night. Yes. Did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. It's a very comfortable bed. Yeah, yeah. My like mum was very... I had some vegan food. Didn't dislike it. Even though your mum said it was her worst recipe. Yeah, and the thing is, like, with Dan, we do often do a lot of recordings during the day at my house. So he comes up about midday, we record, and then he leaves. And he often leaves on the 7 o'clock train, missing dinner time. Yeah. Um, and my mum has picked up on this, and she thinks that Dan hates her. Yeah. Do you hate my mum? Yes. Because it will always be, as she's dishing up, I'll be like, anyway, gotta go. Yeah, and I... She's like, huh, that seems like a weird coincidence. And the irony is, the one day you did and aren't able to have her food, she makes her worst dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she said it was the worst food she'd made. Yeah. It wasn't and bad, though. Yeah, well, my mum's very self-deprecating that way. Yeah, I thought it was good. <laughs> she's like, shit, cooking mum. <laughs> Do you reckon I get quite bratty as well? Do you reckon I'm a bratty kid? Yes. 26-year-old Bratty kid who lives with his mum. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'm pretty, um, yeah, it's, it's nice. But, like, did you, uh, so do you, do you prefer staying in the North as well? The people in the North are nicer, genuinely. Yeah. I realised that when I, like, the train staff are much nicer. I arrived at your house yesterday. You were getting a delivery from Sainsbury's. See, the yeah. driver was very lovely. Yeah, you barely spat in your face. Ba- barely spat in my face. Just a little bit. Whichever, li- whichever moved to the north or any countryside. Cause just- Definitely the countryside. Oh, for sure. I really like the countryside. I kind of grew up in the countryside, so I really do like... I have an affinity for the countryside and nature and farm animals. I really want to own a farm. I think that'd be really cool. Now, Dan, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't grow up in the countryside. You grew up in Essex, which, from my understanding, is a war zone. <laughs> yeah, but in the countryside. In the countryside. Like the song. <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly like the song. Everyone in Essex has got trench foot. <laughs> well, trench face something. <laughs> That's the funniest thing you've ever said. That's it's really, not, though, is it? It's not, but it's very good. Trench face. That's a good band name. Oh, it is a good band name. Trench face. Essex is like the song. <laughs> Oh, my God, it'd be like, I think Trenchface... I should stop comparing the, the most horrendous yeah. thing to ever happen to humanity. Well, um, not the worst thing. No, not the worst thing. But a, a, an awful battle compared to the song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, how would you... Uh, would you ever move up to Essex? Probably not Essex. Although parts of Essex are nice. I, like, I think down south, though. Because we, we both... We met each other in Canterbury. In Canterbury, if you've never been there, it's... It is technically a city, but it's essentially a village with a cathedral on it. It's quite small, but yeah. also, I kind of like that, because it feels countryside. It's one-third students, one-third OAPs, one-third French school children. Yeah, you got to explain that a little bit more. Can you clarify it? Because there are loads of school children that come over from, like, for the day from... Um, from yeah, the and I'm not sure if you know that, like, but, like, there's shops in Canterbury, because a lot of the... Lo- so many tourists come there, like, a kid... And in Canterbury, there's loads of shots that says, I love London, and have London souvenirs. Yeah. Like, yeah remember that? Really it's, like, it's like, what are we, like, we're not in London, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but it's like, I love London. It's like, what, what, like... Canterbury's beautiful, though. It is beautiful, isn't it? Um, but yeah, um, I, yeah, 
Let's, it, I think you should move up with me. Can we live together? Yeah. You want to move up here? No. You can do your job up here. Tell you what, I don't know. I, don't know, I like to be closest to London, I think. Yeah, yeah, accessible range of work. Because yeah. my brother lives from Roundsgate, you can kind of get into London pretty easily. Yeah. But also, you kind of have that space as well. Like they, they can walk. A, they have a dog. They can, they can take the dog out. Yeah. But they, but they can also go to gigs when they want to as well. It's fun that balance, I think. Yeah. Um, cause sometimes up here it can be quite inaccessible to stuff. You have to drive an hour to Newcastle, but it's not in the world. But not everything's up here. But Dan, should we, uh, should we get cracking on? Yeah, let's crack on. Sh- should we kiss first? Alright. Do you actually? Just with lips. Okay. No, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you're a weird person to do this with. Because then you'll probably fall in love with me. Wait, do you mean podcast or kissing? Both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> podcast is kissing, right? That's when I go on dates and, like, I think, yeah, going for, like, you're leaning for that first, like, kiss. Instead of me, podcast equals kissing. So, you, you lean in and go, are you happy? Like, I ask some questions, you know? Um, all right, let's get cracking on. Let's get cracking. I'll see you on the other side of the jingle, yeah? yeah. Promise? Uh, Don't you... abandon me. I swear to God, if I'm on the other end of this jingle and you're not there. Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. Nobs. Mips. Nobs. Mips. Nobs. Myths. No myths. Hi, welcome back. And to the- Matt. God damn it! I knew he'd leave. Up. I told you not to leave after the jingle. Right, fine. I'll do it myself. What happened last week? I don't know what happened last week. Cause Matt always tells me. Ah, oh, someone spat in a jar. Two two dwarfs murdered people. I'm not good at this. Two people got murdered. No, they didn't. Two, two people murdered other people. D- two giants died. A guy spat in a jar. Oh, I'm so good. Oh my god, Matt, you're back, thank god. I was just... Uh, I, I just sat here all along. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Just, just and you didn't feel the need to jump in and help yeah. me with that? I was, no, really, I, I, I was really struggling, man. Uh, with, along with trench face, that's my favourite part of your broadcasting you've done. You was pretty strong. You know how I get when I'm left on my own. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like you, whenever we're not together, you're like that all the time. Like it's very ingratiating. Anyway, um, if people didn't understand what happened last week, we don't because really... that wasn't clear. <laughs> that wasn't clear. So two weeks ago, we talked about the Azir Vinir War, and at the end of that, they had a truce and they spat into a jar. And they made a human out of it called Kavsir. Yeah, not a human. They made a god out of that. They made a human god called Kavsir. A humanoid. They made a humanoid. Called a god that looks like a human. Yeah. <laughs> This is why I left that, and this is why I left you. Matt did the eye roll thing, he hasn't done that in a while. Uh, I do it every... I do it a lot, but you don't see it all the time. Um, What happened, Matt? He was all-knowing, and he would answer people's questions. He was a local celebrity. Yeah, and he went to go and see Fiala and Gala, who... They invited him to a party. Murdered him. Murdered him. Got his blood, blood. made it into mead, poetry mead. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, Special mead that if you drink, makes you really wise. Or a poet. Not one. Not one either. Uh, then, um, another uh, two giants came along, they murdered them both, and their son came along, and uh, as a truce, they got the, uh, the, he got the blood mead, and he stored it in a cavern in, in the heart of a mountain, and looked, uh, told his daughter, Gotlung, I believe. Yeah, I think it was Gotlung. Uh, Gunlod. Uh, Gunlod. Gunlod. To look after it. He said, guard, guard this, this is super powerful guard it with your life. blood mead. Blood, blood me. Oh, that's a good that, album. That's, that's an album name for Trench Face. Yeah. Trench yeah. Face for Blood Me. It's like. I'm really lonely. Taste my blood me. Wanna have some weed with me? I don't know, something like that. So that's wrong. Again, confidence. Yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, are, are we ready to rock? Are we ready? I'm ready to rock. Are you ready to rock? Let's see what happened, shall we? After he got back and gave it his daughter. Do you reckon his daughter's gonna do a good job of guarding this? Yes, I do. Also, can I just say, in the meantime, do you remember, Matt, last week, um, a messenger from the gods came to the door. <laughs> hey, buddy, is Kavsir there? And the dwarves were like, oh, no, he, he choked on his own learning. Uh, and the messenger god was like, mm, okay, then. Okay, then. I'll, sweet, I'll, I'll have a good evening. Yeah. Well, we know that that messenger god definitely knew what was up, right? Because they were, do you think he's gone back and told the gods that something's fishy? Well, I suppose. 
Good. We'll have to find find out. out. I'm just saying, I think the gods might be uh, looking for him too. So, uh, unlike the dwarf brothers, Sutton was boastful about his treasure. As we know, the, the dwarves tried to keep it secret, even though they sang about it quite a lot. Yeah. So it was not long before the gods learned about the divine mead and how it had fallen into Sutton's unholy hands. And Sutton's a giant, by the way, as well. And the gods don't like giants. They hate giants. They hate the Jotunheim. Uh, Odin himself, the Allfather, decided to go to Jotunheim and bring back the mead to Asgard. The masked god. The one-eyed god. The god of the gods. I didn't know he wore a mask. <laughs> I don't think he did either. No, yeah, yeah. He, he's like Slipknot, but of god form. <laughs> um, he disguised himself as a giant of a man and called himself Bolverk, worker of evil. Oh, God, that's a good name. Bolverk, wor- that's... Bolverk, the worker of evil. Yeah, that's that's strong. Yeah, like, At dinner party. So uh, what do you do, David? I'm, I'm, I'm an accountant. <laughs> um, I work for PwC. Oh, great. What do you do, Sarah? I'm a primary school teacher. Uh, what do you do, Bolverk? I'm Bolverk, worker of evil! Oh, that sounds fun. Is that uh, 9 to 5? Or? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's actually quite lonely. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, uh, that, 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 good, good pension, though. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, really good pension. If you're a worker of evil, what would be your day job? Like, I just... think... I think. Are you in like the ministry? Of, is like the ministry of evil? Are you like one of the like? Is it that you're doing the admin for all the guys doing evil? Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, Bolver, can you get that torture assignment on my desk by far? Well, yeah. it's like, huh, I guess this is a torture assignment. Isn't yeah. it? Well, I've got so much work to do. I'm so lonely. I haven't seen my wife and children in many days. <laughs> my boss is always like, Bolver, do this. Bolver, do that. You sound like you're from Durham. I haven't had a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the true evil is is like the, the lack of holiday, I'd say. Uh, um, anyway, <laughs> he crossed the river that divided Asgard and Jotunheim and strode across a desert of shifting grey grit where nothing, not even a grass blade, could take root. Bolverk, worker of evil, aka in- also Odin. Yes, came to. Just remember that Bolverk is Odin. Bolverk, with no following clauses, <laughs> came to a curtain of mountains. He hurried over a snowy pass and last what down. T- right, there's a big typo here. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me spell the typo. He, he at last walked D O V exclamation mark R N. I mean, Devrun! 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 That's also one of the uh, songs of uh, Trench Face yes. album. Devrun! At last he walked down into the narrow green valley. It's obviously down, isn't it? That's how yeah. it is. That whole um, sequence there you were describing sounds to me like, um, you know all those cut shots in like Lord of the Rings? Yeah. The drone footage of them like hiking over different yeah. landscapes. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Um, that's really good. Analogy. Yeah. I'll yeah. do the analogies this week. Yeah, because last week... Uh, There's a rap in the trap and the mouse and the cheese and... The- oh, you fucking- do you know what? Like, I did a speech to... Um, kids recently uh, for mental health and um, I one of the kids asked uh, there were young kids as well like like a uh, year or two was asking me questions about mental health and you have to make it accessible and and so what and it, one of them asked me well what do you do what uh, like how do you make people feel better when they feel sad and I was like well life's like a, a plate you know but if you get sometimes you get a piece of broccoli and it's sometimes a bit like that might make you sad and what we do is learn to look at the broccoli see what it is and we often take it off your plate and make you feel happier is that a good analogy or not on the on my feet is what I have to think about on my feet yes and no is that a good analogy yes because I feel like kids don't like broccoli on their plate so you really like hitting your audience hard yeah but the whole thing about taking it away and liking the broccoli, what the hell is that about? Now kids are going to go away thinking that mental health is just a part of broccoli. Well, I, they're like, you have one and two, so I okay, think it's fine. fine. I yeah. think it's fine. Uh, you can just tell them that sometimes people get sad and cut themselves. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> if you do have uh, issues with self harm, please check out places like Harmless. Great website. See what I'm doing there? I'm a sign person. Yeah, see, and I did. I set you up so that you no, have not mean to you, do you that. Do, I did. You didn't. No, you look, it's a matter close to my heart. I feel like, look, I'm, I'm, I won't make fun of it. Uh, all right. Do you want to take it from here? Well, I want to, I want to read okay. Bolvok, I've just decided. But, 
Okay, fuck. Because I didn't hear Miley. I didn't hear Miley as well. Alright, yeah, yeah, you can do it. You can do Volvo. Uh, uh, should we do like a should we do like a cast list? Because I feel if you do ball work, I can do a couple of, of uh, miscellaneous. We'll see who pops up. Okay. We'll see who pops up. Talk about people popping up. Nine thralls were working in a sloping field. Men from Midgard with a taste for adventure and handsome reward. Ooh. They were scything with a succulent grass with long, slow sweeps and seemed very wary. Who is your master? Bolvok asks one thrall who had stopped work entirely. Uh, Baugi, said one thrall. Baugi! Sutung's brother, the thrall said. The giant guards can see his blood. Shall I sharpen your scythe? Asked Bolvok affably. So, a lot's come on here. I'm going for Odin, I think he's going to do like a, he's doing a cool American. Yeah, so... What's just in it? case you didn't know what accent that was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. He was just very angry, yeah. Mm. But, so we got that exposition there. Uh, there's a brother. Baugi is the brother of Sutton who, and we learn it's in the mountain. And why is, why is Bulwark, slash Odin, asked to sharpen his scythe? Weird thing. The fool was rather quick to agree to this. Uh, and when Bulwark drew his whetstone from his belt and began to put a new edge on the scythe. The other thralls crowded around in hope that he would hone their scythe too. Because obviously they don't want to get their job faster but they're a bit tired as well. Bovik ob- obliged and the thralls all said their scythes had never been quite as sharp as before. They complained that the giant Baugi was too hard a taskmaster. They pointed to the acres of grass still uncut that lay before them coming to the point that the fools had asked where they could buy the home. I might think about selling it, said Bolver. But only to one man, and only to the one, if there is such a man here, who will feast me tonight in the manner to which I am accustomed, for I am Bolver, worker of evil! <laughs> I feel like he would always put that in the end. Yeah, yeah. I am not Odin! <laughs> I am definitely Please, not... I am definitely not Odin! <laughs> Golden Fleece! <laughs> That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, you sell it to a man who will feast me tonight in dinner in the man's system. The air was filled with shouts of agreement. And yes, the thralls shouted. Yes, me, I will. Here, the oh, right. I'm the man. man. Done. No, pick, pick me. Pick yeah. me. Pick <laughs> me. Bulldog worker of evil. Pick me. <laughs> it's nice because it's just started out just one man doing it. It's just like, yes, me, I'm well. <laughs> Sounds a bit creepy. Yeah, uh, so I would add a different Yeah, it's nice. It's good. We'll create the soundscape. Remember we did that in A level drama? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Those are the days. Yeah, imagine. Never had a degree come in more handy. Yeah, exactly. It's, thank God we do a podcast. We can get all that Patreon money that no one's donated to. It's nice that our drama degrees really pay off, don't they? Yeah. No, they don't. Well, how, do you, how do you use your drama degree in a day-to-day life? Pretending to be interested in customers' queries. Yeah. It's like acting job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, please show me all your daughter's pictures. That'd be great. Actually, please do. Uh, Bolvo looked at them with one eye, obviously, because he only got one eye. He smiled grimly. Then he threw the whetstone into the air. In the sun, it glinted. It looked like silver. The thralls gasped. <gasps> they raised their sides and all ran, all of them eager to be under the whetstone when it fell. That sounds dumb. <laughs> it seemed to hang in the air. So high had Bolvog tossed it. The thralls jostled. They stepped backwards, then suddenly swung around. And in the end, in their confusion, all in once, <laughs> they all slit one another's throats. With and none of them all lay in the long grass they had just cut. Right, let's really deep and put like... Let's- not dissecting, but that's what. Uh, but like, so they're all running together. So he's thrown in the air. Also, surely the whetstone you can just leave on the floor and sharpen it. That seems really dangerous to just lob it in the air. Yeah, and I'm not sure why they've done that as well. But um, it, it, they're tasked with like sharpening it as it comes back in the air. Well, I think it, they're all. It's like kind of catching a bouquet of flowers at a wedding. Okay. Good analogy. Uh, and then it's whoever gets it keeps it. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, so I think they're all trying to keep it, but they all have their slides on the hand, and they're all trying to jostle, and they all accidentally just all kill each other at the same time. <laughs> they all slit each other's throats. I mean, that's quite pathetic, isn't that it? That is really pathetic. Still smiling grimly, Bolvok caught the whetstone, <laughs> tucked it into his belt, and walked back the way he had come. Badass. Badass. Odin is a badass. The sun dawdled, and so did Allfather. That's also the name. Not until near and the Bulver, midnight. And Bolvok, welcome to Reaver! Not until near... <laughs> I love that he's like... 
Yeah, I caught it. Me, Odin. And there's one guy still left. I thought you said your name was Bolvark. That's what I, that's what I said. I, I, I'm definitely wrong. You misheard me. I said Bolvark. I didn't say, oh, shut up, kid. Hid my receipt. I'm clandestine. <laughs> Not until nearly midnight did he come down from the mountains again and make his way to Borgie's farm. The giant. He said his name was Bolverg and explained. <laughs> he said his name was Bolverg. That sounds like he was going to introduce himself as Odin. <laughs> it is me, Odin. Oh, Bol- Bolverg. That's what I'm. Sorry, I've been getting confused recently. It's happened a lot. Yeah. If you hear anyone else say I've been confused. Because I got this one eye, it keeps on confusing me. Yeah. <laughs> and also. No relation to Odin, who also has one eye. Odin. Sacrifices one eye to get wisdom from a well. We did this in Odin we did. Sacrifices. He's the wisest man around, and he still can't get his name right. Is that like? Just explain he's been walking all day to Baugi. Yeah, he explains that he's been walking all day. Then he asked Baugi if he could give him some kind of meal and let him stay overnight in one of the huge barns near the farmhouse. A fine time to ask, said Baugi abruptly. Bolvog looked pine, pained and asked Bodhi what was wrong. All my farm hands have been killed. That's what's wrong. Is that a Northern Irish accent? Yeah. Good well, try. Uh, good try. <laughs> <laughs> Bogey banged his fist on a trestle table. A blow so powerful... Powerful. As he said powerful. Pa- powerful. Powerful. Bogey banged his fist on a trestle table. A blow so powerful it would have flattened a man's head. All nine of them. How can I hope to find any more of this time of year? I have an idea, said Bolver. You can see I'm strong. Very, very strong. strong. I can take on the work of nine men. Nine evil men! <laughs> Fry a Bolver! <laughs> but my crops are actually quite nice. I can't do that. <laughs> Bogey looked Bolver up and down and smiled in disbelief, thinking Bolver was a hollow boaster. And if I agreed, what wages would you ask? Only this. I like that the, the, the lights have dimmed. <sighs> Everything like, it's like a, a spotlight on just on Bo- Bolvog. Only this. <sighs> One drink of Sutton's mead. <gasps> Bogey sniffed and shook his head. I may be strong, said Bolvog, but to be a poet, that's, <laughs> that's the finest calling. <laughs> I may be a worker of evil after a hard day, nine to five, but working my evil. But it's hard to articulate that. And I really want to articulate If only I could put it down on, in some prose. <laughs> some beautiful sonnets. I just want to I, write. <laughs> I wish to write. There's nothing more evil than rhyming couplets. <laughs> but that mead has nothing to do with me. Said Bogey. My brother has it in his safekeeping. And no one except Gunlord has ever seen a drop of it. That's how things are. Well, said Bovok, those are my terms. Baggy shrugged his shoulders, and so Bovok got up to leave. I can talk to Satan, said Bogey. He had a... Oh, sorry, not... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he had little love for his brother, but he felt sure that, in any case, Bovok would never be strong enough to keep his part of the bargain. And we've seen this before, where um, people... I think, you know, if they haven't done their part of the bargain, I'd have to pay them. We saw that in episode 94. The Master Builder. We have. Work for me this summer. And that's how my brother, how you help me out. That's the best I can do. Jackson's it's getting better as you go. Yeah, it's not bad. How far can I trust you? Uh, you'll see. Say Bowie. I'm actually not, and that's not bad. No. For as long as the days, Bulwark worked for Bowie. As the sun climbed out of the east, Bolvok walked to the green field, still thick with honeydew, that fell every night from the branches of Yggdrasil! Yggdrasil! The tree of the nine realms. All day... Oh, what? Who's, who's in uh, Yggdrasil? There's French Norn. French Norn? Uh, Norn in Glory? And Norny Bastard. <laughs> Norny Bastard. There was one more, wasn't there? No, there's three. There's three Norns. Well, there's four. No, three Norns. There's four Norns. There's three Norns. There's four Norns. 35 pounds. There's four norns. Give me it right now. Five pounds. Five pounds. I think there are. Th- I think there are four. I think it's Norny bastard, <laughs> Norn in glory. What's the other one? French norn. French norn and. Um... I'm right, Dan. I actually listen to the podcast. <laughs> How many norns in? Uh, North and Philip. North. North. Are you sure there weren't four? Norns. I think it says there are three important norns, aren't there? 
I just swear there was another funny one we come up with. Free that, free that. Yeah. Free have not free not. Okay, it's three. Have the five pounds. No, though. I didn't bet five pounds. Yeah, but you knew I was right though. I know. So there's three nones, but also there's a little uh there's a little uh, there's a couple of there's a lot of animals in the tree. What is it? imagine if there's a goat? There's a deer? But there's not just one deer, there's a very, very heavy metal deer. Durafor! <laughs> oh, yeah, like yeah, Durafor, he, he's the front man for uh, a trench face. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so, um, so he's turned up and it's a beautiful field, he's ready to start his day. Well, he, he's been working all summer. He's been working all summer. All day he worked under the bright, bright skull of the sky? What a weird turn of phrase. He worked while the sun hurried west and until it seemed to him blood red. On the western skyline. Baugi, uh, the uh, foreman of evil, I suppose, uh, <laughs> was amazed that Bulwark was as good as his boast and seemed to need very little rest, but thought now that Bulwark was, must be more than merely human. He's not a man. He's the worker of evil! <laughs> That's not a title you just get from being a normal guy. Exactly. But also, like, can we just think about the story for a second? Odin's very desperate to get... Some in the mead. Yeah. He's one of the most powerful gods ever. Yeah. Arguably the most powerful god. Why is he going to deep cover for like over a summer just to get a sip of this mead? This is a long shot, right? Yeah, I was trying to work out what would be the problem with him just rocking up as himself and going, Oi, give me that fucking... Is it because he's in the Jotunheim? That's the problem, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think I so. think the whole problem is that he... There's, there's cultural he, kind of... There's cult, like, he will probably get, like... Yeah, let's... They'll probably try and kill him if he's... Yeah. But, also, like... Like, I don't know why he's in such, like, deep... Like, he doesn't need to do this level of, kind of, like, secret ops. You know what I mean? But, like, we, we can't... I feel it's But he really easy. doesn't like the Jotunheim, does he? Like, but, they really don't like him, so just, he's really trying to go covert. I just still think it's beneath him, though. You know what I mean? I'll just send Thor to go and smash through the hole, grab the thing, and, and F yeah, off. You know what I mean? That's true. Um, at the end of the summer, Baldock asked Balky for his wages. He still wants to get paid, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> they... And Balky agreed. They went together to find Sutton at Nickborg. And Baugi told his brother how Bolvok had helped him uh, throughout the whole summer and asked for some of the divine mead. Never, said Sutton, not a drop. Well, said Bolvok, as soon as he was alone with Baugi. I hope you're not going to accept Sutton's answer. I've worked for you all summer. I've kept my promise, Baugi said. Why should he have it all for himself? Don't you fancy a mouthful, Bogey? Since your one brother won't be part with your mead willingly, let us see if we can trick him out of it. Impossible, said Bogey. Do you know where it's hidden? He was rather nervous of Sutton, but he was rather nervous of Bolvok. Bolvok pulled an auger called Ratty out of his belt and told the giant that, if he, uh, that he might be able to drill a hole through the mountain. This is the least you can do in return for my work. Basically, he has a spell that he might be able to go through. Yeah. Um, I think he's planned this. Absolutely. But why didn't he just do this from the get-go? Yeah, I don't know. He, gonna... he just worked, like, for nothing for a whole month. Yeah. Idiot. Asgard's in disarray because Odin's off doing some fucking farming for exactly. some giant. But, well, actually, the real Bobo is actually there just doing accounting, so it's all right, so... <laughs> Bogey took the auger and pressed the shank... What is an auger, by the way? It might be a drill or something. I don't know. Bogey took the auger and pressed the shank against the sheer rock face of the mountain. Hittenburg. 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 With both hands, he turned the hand... Oh, it's for the... Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wondered how to get rid of the troublesome farmland. He was... Farmhand. He wondered how to get rid of the troublesome farmhand as he wound and wound the Argus sat, sank into the mountain. So Baugi's looking to get rid of Bulwark and have the mead for himself. So yeah. there's several layers of deception going on. There, exclaimed the giant, right through. He withdrew the drill and wiped his brow. Bulwark peered with his one, his only good eye, into the dark passage left by the Alga. Then he filled his lungs and blew fiercely into it. A shower of rock chippings blew back into his face, and Bulberg knew that Bulgi had not, after all, caught the mountain. Wait, who's saying this? Were you trying to cheat me? He said. The giant said nothing. He drilled further into the mountain, 
bowing silently to the spurs of Bolvok as soon as he could. But when Balgi withdrew the orgo once more and Bolvok blew down the hole a second time, all the loose chippings were carried forward to the tide of air. Then Bolberg knew that the giant had bored right into the room at the heart of the Nittenberg. At once he turned himself into a snake and slithered the auger hole. <gasps> so he kind of got a little gap and he went... <laughs> he slithered. <laughs> Why do you that? Boggy stabbed at Volvok with the point of the auger, but he was not quick enough. The snake was already halfway down the passage on his way to Gunlord, the Divine Mead. And the Divine Mead. As soon as he reached the stronghold, Bolvok changed himself back into a giant of a man, one-eyed but handsome. Oh, you think you can't be handsome at all. Um, and stood in front of Sutton's daughter. Good. That's kind of cool. So he's drilled a hole. The whole time, bogey has been like... Going to kill him. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And just as he's about to, he's shoo, turned himself into a snake and yeah. slipped through the hole. Yeah, and now... Bowdy realizes that he's a god. god he yeah, and, he's a re- god. and now he's reappeared yeah. as a human in, and, and into the mountain. He's, he's there for a uh, good luck in that home. Oh. Hey, baby. How's hey, baby. Uh, ah. Do you want to work some that uh, evil? Mm. Gunlord was sitting on a stool of solid gold, and at the sight of Bolverk, Sutton's stern warning that she should guard the mead flew right out of her head. She was not sorry for to have company. Hold on one second there. So, Gunlord, she's in the heart of the mountain. Looking after some blood mix, yeah. right? I can't imagine she gets many people she has to guard it from, right? No. This is her one chance to do it. And as soon as she feeds the first person, I'm going to say in a century, she's like, I forgot what I was doing! <laughs> Welcome, come on in! <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. She was not sorry to have company. She's probably lonely. Aww. She sat and listened to Bolverk's beguiling words and songs. She wrapped her arms around him. For three days they talked and laughed. And for three nights they slept together. Yeah. Odin is really... Bam, what is bam, he bam, doing? Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. In the silent cave he... under Hiddenborg, the heartless father of the gods made love to the spellbound daughter of Sudung. <laughs> 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 bam, bam, bam. When Gunnard was drunk with passion and ready to give Bulwark whatever he desired, he asked for three draughts of Kavir's blood, and Gunnard took his hand and led him to the mead. With his first draught, Bulwark emptied Odorir, which is the, the cauldron, and his second draught, Bod Bodin. And with his third draught, son, the two draughts, the father of the gods held all the divine mead in his mouth. Okay, so let, let's break this down for a second. He is so good at lovemaking that she has completely forgotten all of her jobs. That's what I do as well. Yeah. So he's just been Sorry. really passionately making love to this giant for mm. three nights. Yeah, and, and he's like, oh, well, if you, if, you, uh, if you let me in and have a drink, I can write you some poetry. And she's like, oh, no, I bet not, but maybe that does sound good. Um, but I only want three sips. Three sips, that sounds fine. So he's gone in, and his three sips so he has all of it, all three of them. He's like in his cheeks, like a. Do you know what this reminds me of? Which is quite funny. What? It's quite similar to in Greek mythology, when uh... oh god, was it Jason? Who was it that went to free his his men? Were currently transformed oh, into pigs. Odysseus, like, Odysseus, yeah, this is Cersei. Calypso had Cersei, Cersei had transformed his men into pigs, and he <laughs> went to rescue them. <laughs> but he got distracted and he ended up banging up for like yeah. a week. <laughs> That would be, you know, I'd be a pig for a week, mate. It's like, dude, we saw you enter the house and we were like, well, there can't be more than a couple of minutes until he rescues us. Seven days later, he comes out of the house looking disheveled, like, oh, took your time, bloody hell. Like, this is about that, right? He's yeah. like, right, just go in there. I've done the hard part. I've done this guy's work for a week. I've got here. I've slipped and said, all I've got to do is knock her. Kill. I could probably just murder her and take the mead. All I've got to do is murder. Three days later. All right, I got, I got sidetracked. <laughs> I mean, again, he's been just blown his way through and got the thing. Gone, She's but... like, he's like, okay, I've just got to get in there and get the mead. Hey, how are you doing? She's like, I haven't had company in a while. And he's like, oh, I could stay. <laughs> I've been working hard for a couple of summers. Uh, yeah, do you fancy... Do you like men who were just transformed uh, from a snake? Do you like a man who just escaped from your own cult? Have you, have, have you just noticed, Gunnar, that your, your, your father sounds like a giant, but your uncle is Northern Irish. What's up with that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so he's got the he's, he's drank he's held all in his mouth yeah and it's like, like he's got three separate things in his mouth then Odin tra- turned himself into an eagle flapped down the passage out of so it's big enough for an eagle to fucking fly through it's a big drill Hodenborg headed to Asgard 
So he's Lehman. He's, 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 he's left. Go, go! Oh, what's his what's his flight speed as an eagle? Uh, two hundred forty-two miles per hour. Nice. Well, that's actually a lie, isn't it? Because he's not a Peregrine Falcon. Yeah, yeah, obviously. And that'd be, that's the fastest one. Certain's but way faster than Brian the Eagle. Oh, Brian. He turned to Brian the Eagle. Like, that's his... He went from Bulver to Brian <laughs> the Eagle. Like, what a cover story. What a story. Sutton saw him and at once murmured the, the magic words known only to those who have drunk the divine mead. Gods and giants and dwarfs saw a dark sight. One eagle pursuing towards the kingdom of Asgard. If he could get to Asgard, he would be safe. The Azir quickly brought out jars and bowls. So he's, turned, so he's turned into an eagle and is now pursuing him. Uh, one, yeah, they saw one eagle pursuing another. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. I miss. You read that. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm, thank you for clarifying. No worries. So he's he's mumbled something, turned himself into an eagle, and now two e- like they're both as eagles chasing yeah. each other. Stop it! Leave me alone! I will get you. I'm born for it. No, you know. Oh. I'm I, I, I'm a worker of ambivalence. <laughs> The Azir quickly brought out jars and bowls and laid them side by side so they, they covered the whole courtyard just inside the great wall of Asgard, previously built by an unknown Oh, giant. so the, Asgard, like the Asgardians are waiting, they knew his mission, they're waiting for him, yeah. they were in preparation for him, he, he only told them what to do when he returned. But imagine trying to go up, and at a certain point, uh, after I've killed a member of their sides and I've seduced a dog for three days, I'm going to come back as an eagle. So be prepared for that day. Uh, in the with it in his mouth. Yeah. And his wife's like, uh, wait, sorry, what was that about the sleeping with the girls? Don't worry about that. I'm an eagle. Go. <laughs> uh, so they've got balls all over the courtyard and just inside the Great Wall. Anxiously, they watched as such one came closer and closer to Odin. He's, in a, he's a faster eagle. The distant rustle became a whir and the whir became terrible flapping and beating of wings. There was only a wingspan between the two birds. And then... The eagle, Odin, dived in over the wall and spat the mead into the crocs assembled beneath him. So as he's flying, it's like a, well, like a, you know they fight forest fires with yeah. big planes, they're like, it's like that, he's just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, like you see like a, a garden, like kind of how it's got... He's done it all of Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that a clear answer? <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I okay? Did you know, like, <laughs> the it, I know it, it, goes, it covers a cone area, it goes... Yes, I've got it. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. They get they get what you mean when you yeah you did enough sprinkler noises for them to know. What sprinkler, you that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Your analogies today. <you> know? <laughs> In his haste to escape Sutung, Odin could not help letting some mead spill outside the wall. But it was so little that the gods were not bothered about it. They said that anyone who wanted it could have it, and that became the po- the pole tasters portion. What was the pole tasters? Poet tasters. Poet tasters portion. I don't know. So a little bit dribbled well, out. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin this end of the story. But I think well, I'll come back to that in a second. But if you finish up the story, I'll come back to it entirely. Nicely. How kind of you to do that midway through. Saitan shrieked and wheeled away and shrieked again. He had lost through cunning what he had won through force. Wait, and there was nothing he could do. He didn't lose it through force. He he got his reparation force for his like, family. He didn't lose it through... You know, he, he, he didn't win it through force. Anyway, that's true. Yeah, that's true. He didn't win it through force. He won it because the guy murdered his parents. Yeah, exactly. Is this a good... I don't think it's alright for the gods just to take yeah. it, steal it. And the gods... They had lost wise Kavsir, witness to the friendship between the Azir and Vanir. But because of the cunning of Ulfather, they had won back his blood. Once more, Odin drank some of the precious mead, and from time to time he offered a draught to one of the Azir, or to a man or two in Midgard. He offered them the gift of poetry. So, and before we finish the end. So, Kavsir is... Uh, they got kind of brought back the blood, blood in honour of Cavesia and in honour of that Asia veneer relationship as well. But also, uh, yeah, you, you know when he got nipped and a little bit came out as well. Um, and I'm not sure if this is canon, but I heard this story. Apparently, a little bit, because uh, Odin was a bit scared, some came out of his butt 
some of the wine kind of, uh, some of the blood came out of his butt. And some of the, uh, so there's a little bit of that portion there. And it's to be said, when you, uh, if you see a poet who's really bad, they've had some of their shit wine. You know what I mean? They, they haven't had the gift of poetry, they've had the gift of shit poetry. That's... Okay. That's the idea. You made that up, haven't you? No. I'm not sure how credible that is, but it's a thing. Anyway, let's rank it. Damn, we've learned a lot, man. Wait, it's Dan Vaughn from. He's, he's left me here by myself. What? After I left him left to the first jingle. God damn it. Oh, well, at least it'll be fun and snappy and no one will talk over me this time. So, we're going to rank it on four sections Life Skills, Morals, Creativity, and WTF. We're going to do it out of uh, ten of each. So, Life Skills, what practical things did I learn and only did I learn? I learned how to seduce a lady. Um, I do need you here at this point. <laughs> I think it's how long you can go for. I can do the whole thing. I've been here the whole time, by the way. Oh, thanks. We, we don't see each other. No. Um, or maybe we shouldn't see each other. But, um, so we learned... We learned a lot. We learned to turn into a snake. Learned how to kill people with their own sides. Sorry, we learned how to chop grass. We learned how to work. Learned how, how to drill into a monkey. A monkey? Learned how to drill into a mountain. We learned how to drill into a mountain. Learned how to turn into an eagle. Learned how to make passionate love. Mm. Mm-mm. We learned how to do poetry. We learned how to do shit poetry. Yeah. We learned how to uh, uh, steal people's reparation costs. We learned how to honor the memory of a dead person. Can you see it? And we also learned, um, yeah, I, I think we learned a lot. We learned how to drink stuff. Like, it's like hold it in our cheeks like hamsters. Yep. Hi. I'm going to say <sighs> seven or eight. Seven. You reckon seven? Yeah. Yeah. I put that again. I'm gonna, can we it's just, on the paper now. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue for the case of eight because we learned a lot of like scything and whetstones and stuff like that. On top of murder as well. Like he cunningly murdered these people in a way that no one else would be murdered ever. So I think eight. Okay. Right? It's not It's not unreasonable. No. Do you agree? That's fine. Eight. Morals. Hit me. Ow! <laughs> that was a one inch punch. Morals. Don't steal people's reparation costs. Don't steal people's reparations costs, yeah. Pay from what you need to owe them, because uh, Bolver, worker of evil, worked all summer. Wasn't paid. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, technically, in all fairness to Bowie, he did try his best, and he did, and that's more than he was going to do. So that's yeah. pretty decent, but also, yeah. Morals, um, don't trust your daughter to guard something. There was literally her one opportunity to guard that, <laughs> and she messed it up big time. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I feel bad for Gunnar, because she had to live... It's kind of like a prison sentence being down there all the time by herself, right? Yeah. So I feel I feel for good lot. I think she got a bit of passion. I think it's all right for her. It's actually very sexist because the myth is assuming that because she's a woman, she was just easily seduced. No, I think in all fairness, like, I think it's, it's it might be the way it's phrased here, if you know what I mean. But I think it's there. I, I mean, like, if, if you see a handsome stranger, you're like, ooh, wouldn't mind a bit of that, you know? Mm. Uh I don't think I've ever said that before. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll have a bit of that. Ooh. Ooh. Am I sexist? Uh, no, probably not. Oh, thanks, man. Um, we, uh, if in doubt, turn to an eagle. Uh, if in doubt, turn to a snake. Uh, but also, be wary of other people. Yeah. Also, talk to your family. If if the giants talked to each other and had a communication, they would have stopped Odin, Odin from receiving it. Right? Yes. Because they stopped the or if Balky mentioned it to um, I think, uh, to the, the mate Sutong. But yeah, there's lack of communication. I don't feel there's lots of No, I don't. Maybe four or five. Yeah, I think four. Four? Yeah. But is it midway? I no, think... it's less than last week, and that was five. I think that we made a mistake last week. I think that's midway. But it's too late, too late to do that. Creativity. I say this is pretty creative. Him for it. The way he was killed with the whetstone and the yeah. slit in the throats. The way he worked all summer. The way he was called Bolvo. Even his character was called yeah, Bolvo, yeah. the worker of evil. And the fact um, that the gods knew back in Asgard. Yeah, the fact that it was all planned. They'd been waiting all summer. Uh, the idea of him drilling a hole and just escaping at the last minute but as a snake. The idea that he sleep with the girl. That's all I go. I didn't see that. I thought he'd just murder her or something or steal yeah, her. I didn't see him actually befriending her and like manipulating devious, her. Isn't it? Yeah. The, uh, the idea that they both turned into eagles and like... There's a cat, like a dog the, fight. Like a dog fight in the air, yeah. Like a dog fight at the end. Um, yeah, a lot going on here. 
I'm going to say nine. I think a nine. Is it more creative than last week, so? No, it's an eight. Let's say nine, because we said we both felt a nine. But that I, makes up for us putting a four for morals, it's fine. <laughs> but I think it's way less WTF than us. Yeah, Last week definitely. was ten. There is murder. Well, there is uh, murder. Well, but there, there is. That's quite yeah, cool. Yeah, there's, 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 that's the big thing. That's the takeaway message. And that's going to get made with the point. But also, there's also seducing people, a girl on duty, um, <sighs> deceiving Balgi, yeah. and, uh, and also the clipping of the eagle fight at the end. But the main thing is the sides. I'm gonna, I think it's either a six or a seven. Maybe a seven? I'd probably push for a seven. I'd push for a seven. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Seven. Bang. He plays that as uh, plus eight, plus four, plus nine, plus seven. 28? Eight. Yep, 28. Nice. So, you know what? Norse ones are pretty strong, I feel. Yeah, they are. They're always good. So, um, again, thank you so much for listening to uh, our stupid podcast. We really appreciate it. And we're getting close to number 100 as well. Woo! Which, uh, 100 and 101 are live specials, so do uh, check it out when it does drop in the next month. So do do. It's going to be fun, isn't it, Dan? It's going to be really fun. Uh, we haven't recorded it yet, but... I'm sure it will be really good fun to those eight people who bought tickets. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, if you want to get in touch and you like what we do, uh, first give us five stars on iTunes. That'd be really, really appreciated. That spreads the word to the digital audience, but you can also spread the word to your local audience. You, if you have friends or family you want to share this podcast to, or you think they might enjoy it, please do share it. That's how it would help us massively, wouldn't it, Dan? It would help me personally, financially, massively. It probably won't. Me and Matt only make a couple couple of thousand pounds an episode, so it's really... Yeah. And that's without sponsorship. That's right? without sponsorship, yeah. yeah. Although Nike are looking to... Okay, so you're going to sponsor us. That's from last week's episode. They emailed yeah. us. <laughs> Colonel Sandals is email me. Um, that's a joke, by the way. We don't make any money. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. yeah we, look at our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> and if if you want to get in touch, you can email us at mispodcast at gmail.com. You can. Also, you can follow us Facebook at Miss Podcast, Twitter at Miss Podcast, and also Facebook Misfits Group. If you want to have a chat, we usually put polls and stuff up there when we remember to do so. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'll rephrase that. I usually put stuff up yeah. there. Dan, what have you contributed? Well, you're the social media guy. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the social media guy. <laughs> We're the social media guys, but I'm the one who does the jobs. What's What's your role, Dan? I um. What's your role? I rock up, and I help you not do this podcast on your own. Yeah, but that's what I do as well. Yeah, I, you know, what, what, what's your what's your job? If, I, if I'm the social media guy, what's your job? <laughs> That's I, a really good question. Technically, I'm the league tables guy. But you're not no, the league I'm tables not, guy. I haven't done it. Oh my Jesus fucking Christ! Uh, right, let's not do this production meeting. On, uh, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fire you off there. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna fire you on there, and we'll finish the podcast like that. Hang on. Let's do it. Let's do a like an appraisal. So, let's what are you gonna do it live on live? Episode you, <laughs> you will do it for 101. That's how we'll finish the show. <laughs> and you're fine. That's what we'll do. 101. We'll f- I'll fire you then. Okay? And everyone will wave goodbye, Dan Rhodes. Goodbye, Dan Rhodes. And we'll want some more relaxing as well. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> you look really sad. Now. I am sad. Sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, like I'm, a ter- I'm sorry, I'm a terrible person. You're not a terrible person. You're just a terrible worker of evil. That's what you are. Um, shall we finish off this episode? Maybe that's a- Maybe you are a worker of evil, and your evil is being lazy. Yeah, nice. Is that, I, I, I feel, sorry Dan, I'm sorry if I upset you. It's okay, just, yeah, I just okay. want to leave now, let's just end the podcast. You uh, end it! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, I've been Matt Hoss. I've been Lazy Down Roads. And we have been Bulbert Workers of Evil! There you go. Do you like know, my voice will work Bulbert by the way? I might... He pops up again. He won't pop up again, will he? He's not going to pop up again. That's a shame. But we can make him. Bulwark, the worker of evil, says goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. And I am Algie from Northern Ireland. Bye. Miss. Miss.